Hey guys, this is Drew Video DNA Reviews and just want to let you know that today's video is brought to you by Amazon App and Final Fantasy War of the Visions. As only mentioned previously, War of the Visions is celebrating its first anniversary and for a very limited time, if you buy an anniversary pack in War of the Visions, you'll receive $10 in credit to use as you please on the Amazon app. But wait, there's more. In cooperation with Square Enix, Amazon is also hosting a vision card design contest. The top 4 designs will win a tablet, and the design that gets first place will get their card made in the game. For more info, check out the link below in the description, and let's get back to the video. Hello everyone, Soberoni of GNA Reviews here, bringing you another event guide. This time we'll be taking a look at the Tokugawa Restoration event, aka Oku, which is dropping in FGONA. Now in order to participate in this event, you do need to have cleared Lost Belt 3, so this is absolutely not an event for newer players. As is usually the case with my event guides, this is going to be a very in-depth guide, covering everything from the new servants and craft essences, to the best farming strategies, to even the final boss fight. So to help you guys out, I've left timestamps in the description down below so you can jump to whichever part of the video you need the most. Now with that said, let's take a look at everyone's favorite part of the event, New Servants. Unfortunately, there aren't going to be any welfare servants in this event, however we are getting a new servant in Kama. Kama is a limited 5 star assassin with a max attack of 11,528 and a max HP of 12,889. She has a single target quick noble phantasm that deals great damage to a single enemy and also has a high chance of inflicting charm. Now I do have a full spotlight for Kama and I will link that in the description down below if you'd like to take a look at it for a more full analysis of her. However, suffice it to say, Kama is not only one of the best assassins in the game, but one of the best DPS servants in the game, so I do highly recommend rolling for her. But in addition to Kama, we're also going to be getting raid ups for Parvati, Yagyu, Scheherazade, and Kiara. All four of them are excellent, so you really can't lose with rolling on this banner, and I will include spotlights for all of those servants in the description down below, so you can check those out. But for now, let's take a look at craft essences. As always, this event is going to bring with it a plethora of new craft essences and command code. Starting with the gacha craft essences first, we have the 3 star Hikeshi Spirits. This craft essence increases buster card effectiveness by 3% and NP gain by 5%. It also increases the powder drops by 1 or 2 if you max limit break it. This is a pretty decent budget craft essence for some buster servants like Kid Gil and Mecha Ellie. Moving on to the 4 star gacha craft essence, we have Resplendent Spring. This CE increases your NP gain and crit damage by 15%, and it'll also increase the shell drops by 1 or 2 if you max limit break it. This is a pretty decent CE for crit servants who love to noble phantasm like the Valkyries, Emiya, and Ryoma. And finally, we have the 5 star CE of the gacha, the Princess's Pilgrimage. This craft essence will increase quick card effectiveness and crit damage by 10%, and it'll also start you off with 40% NP charge at the beginning of the battle. In addition, it will increase the hairpin drops by 1 or 2 if you max limit break it. This is a very good craft essence for any kind of quick crit servant like Ku Prototype, Okita, or even Kama. We do have one more 5 star craft essence that's going to be purchasable from the shop, and that's going to be the 5 star Guild the Lily. This CE is going to increase quick and arts card effectiveness by 8% and also grant 15 crit stars upon entering the battlefield. In addition, for this event only, it will also increase your servant's damage by 100% or 200% if you max limit break it. As for how good the craft essence is outside of battle, it can be pretty decent on any kind of quick and art servant like Bradamante, Shiki, and Uriel. In addition to the craft essences, we also have three new command codes. We have the three star command code, Command Seal of Faintly Corrupted Delusions. This command code will inflict poison status on an enemy when you attack them with the engraved card and will also drain your own HP by 100. This can be a pretty useful command code for any kind of poison servants like Shuten, Robin Hood, or Serenity. Next up, we have the 4 star the Spear of Love, Conduct, and Wisdom. This command code grants 2 crit stars when attacking with the engraved card, and it also deals an additional 20% extra damage against enemies that have been charmed. Obviously, this goes well on any servant that has a charm, like Kama, Uriel, and Alexander. And finally, we have the 5 star command code, None of a Merciful Gaze and Warm Expression. When it's engraved on a card, that card will deal 20% more damage against lawful enemies, and an additional 20% extra damage against ruler class enemies. This is a pretty niche command code, however it does go 
well on most boss killers like Kiara, Gilgamesh, and Melt. As far as the event shop goes, it's going to be pretty standard. There's going to be three different types of currencies. The gold currency is going to be the hairpins, the silver currency is going to be the shells, and the bronze currency is the powder. Using the powder currency, you're going to be able to purchase one copy of the event CE, as well as giant rings, dragon fangs, spinal fluids, 3 star foes, and 3 star and 4 star EXP. Using the shells you'll be able to purchase yet another copy of the event craft essence, as well as lamps, eternal gears, stingers, and lancer, caster, and assassin pieces. And finally with the hairpins you can purchase 2 event craft essences, as well as spirit roots, bloodstone tears, knight medals, and lancer, caster, and assassin monuments. If you plan on clearing out the entire shop, you're going to need 3000 hairpins, 2,850 shells, and 3,200 powders. It's also worth noting that there's only going to be 4 copies of the event craft essence in the shop, so if you do want to max limit break it, you're going to need a 5th copy from a drop. When it comes to the event structure, this is going to be a very unique event that's unlike anything we've seen before. The event is going to play like an old school dungeon crawler. The map is going to be a maze and you're going to travel around from room to room looking for the exit on each floor. As you move from room to room, more and more of the map is going to become visible. Usually whenever you reach a new room, there's going to be 2 or 3 branching paths and you can choose to take one. However, opening a path to another room requires a lantern item, which you find by exploring the dungeon and clearing rooms. Usually clearing a room of enemies rewards you with one lantern, which you can then use to open another pathway to another room. So even if you go the wrong way and you hit a dead end, don't worry about it because you will get more lanterns just by clearing the path that you're on. And then once you do that, you can just go ahead and pick another path. As I mentioned, each room is going to have enemies that need to be killed. For most of the battles, your party is going to be limited to just three servants, so there's not going to be any back row. But one special aspect of this event is that you don't get to choose your mystic code. You'll be given the Tokugawa Crest skills, which must be used for every battle, and those skills consist of a stun, a charisma, and a star bomb. However, even though you can't change your Mystic Code skills, you can still gain Mystic Code experience for whichever Mystic Code you have equipped. So make sure that you equip the Mystic Code that you need to level, even if you can't use those skills. As the event progresses and you clear more and more floors, the skills that you have are going to become stronger and stronger to the point of being insanely OP. But these skills are going to have a 99 turn cooldown, so they can only be used once per battle each, so use them wisely. Now there is one other major feature of this event, and that is going to be the gauge that fills up on the side of the screen. I am going to go into detail about what this gauge does and how it fills up, but be warned that there are a bit of event spoilers here, so if you want to go in completely blind as to what this gauge does so that you can be surprised, you can go ahead and skip to the next section of the video. Now for everyone else, this gauge is going to represent the difficulty of the final fight against Kama. The more of those OP skills that you use, the quicker that this gauge is going to fill up, and the more that it fills up, the harder that comma fight is going to be. It's also going to fill up just by clearing floors. But don't worry too much about this, because once you unlock the final fight against Kama, new paths are going to open up in all the previously cleared floors, and completing these new paths is going to reward you with white Hanafuda cards. You can then trade these cards into the shop, which will reduce the gauge, thus making the fight easier. And if you do, the game is going to give you black Hanafuda cards, which you can then trade into the shop to increase the gauge and make the fight harder. So basically, you can freely adjust the difficulty of the comma fight depending on how full or empty this gauge is. Much like with CCC, this event is very long, with many story quests and boss fights. It's basically a mini story chapter in that respect, and it is harder than the average event, with the difficulty being very similar to the Lost Belts. You can't exactly blitz through the event either, because there's going to be a time lock. The first floor of the dungeon is going to be available right away, but the other floors are going to be added at a rate of 1 per day. Except floors 5 and 6, which are going to be the final floors, and they're added together on day 5 of the event. The best approach to this event is to clear as much as you can every day, just using your natural AP. That way you can save a lot of apples in the long run while still making very good progress. 
Procrastinating and leaving everything for the last couple of days is not something you want to do, because this event is massive and can easily overwhelm you. As for enemies, most of the enemies in this event are going to be assassin class or just cavalry class enemies in general, so it helps tremendously to have a strong caster like Sanzo, Nero, or Sieg. And alter egos can also be invaluable, so Melt, King Protea, and Kiara are going to shine here as well. Thankfully, when it comes to farming for this event, it's going to be very easy and straightforward. There's going to be a lot of different bonuses that you can take advantage of that are going to make farming much, much easier. First up, there's going to be a ton of bonus servants. Kama is going to receive a 100% damage bonus for this event, while Yagyu, Parvati, Shahrazad, Matahari, Kiara, and Mosh are also going to receive 50% damage bonuses for this event. In addition to all of that, all of the Japanese servants that you have in the game are going to receive a 30% damage bonus during this event. So there's going to be a ton of servants dealing bonus damage here. Beyond the servants though, there's also going to be the craft essences. The three star craft essence from the gacha is going to increase your powder drops. The four star gacha CE is going to increase the shell drops. And the five star gacha CE is going to increase the hairpin drops. The five star CE that you can buy in the shop is going to also increase your servant's damage by an additional 100% for the event. So if you give this craft essence to someone like Kama, then she's going to be dealing an extra 200% bonus damage. Or if you give it to a Japanese servant, they're going to be dealing 130% bonus damage. The best strategy for going about farming is to get as many copies of the three-star craft essence as you can from the friend point gacha. Once you do, you should focus on getting the shop CE immediately to make the event much easier. Generally speaking, if you're lucky enough to get a craft essence drop, whether you choose to max limit break the CE or not largely depends on your team composition. If you run one DPS and two supports, then you should max limit break the CE. If you run multiple DPS servants, then it's better to keep it separate. I would suggest max Max limit breaking it for the final fight though, because it will make the whole fight much easier. Now when it comes to farming the various currencies for the shop, you're going to need to farm the repeatable free quest as much as possible. Keep in mind that just like with the dungeon floors, not all of the free quests are going to be available right away. More free quests are going to unlock every day as more floors are added, and the later quests have better drop rates, so it's best to wait until you reach the end of the event before you start going crazy farming with apples. As for which free quests are the best to farm, the powder is going to be best farmed at the Aurora Borealis room on floor 2. It's going to feature caster class enemies and it's also going to drop hearts and lanterns. The shells are going to be best farmed in the Room of Everlasting Darkness on floor 3, which is going to consist of assassin enemies and is also going to drop out tuplet crystals and bone. And finally, hairpins are going to be best farmed on floor 4 in the Bird of Paradise room, which is going to be all rider enemies and it's also going to drop mirrors, octuplet crystals, and gears. The final battle is going to culminate in an epic fight against Kama. Much like with the fight against Kiara and CCC, there are a number of ways that you can customize the difficulty of this fight. You can make this fight nightmarishly hard or much easier. If you want to decrease the difficulty, then trade in the white Hanafuda cards to the shop. To increase the difficulty, trade in the black Hanafuda cards. You can get these cards by completing certain rooms on each floor. And trading in one card will give you a copy of the other, so you can always adjust the difficulty on the fly. To give you an idea of how extreme the difference is in the difficulty, this is what Kama's stats look like on the easy difficulty. She's going to have three break bars, and her first HP bar is going to be 150,000, her second is going to be 240,000, her third is going to be 350,000, and then her final HP bar is going to be 500,000. But on hard mode, her first HP bar is going to be 1.2 million, her second is going to be 1.5 million, her third is 1.7 million, and then her final HP bar is 2 million. As for her skills, when it comes to the easy mode, you're actually going to receive a bunch of benefits when you fight her. First off, your servants are going to restore 100 HP every time they attack. They're also going to remove up to 3 debuffs every turn. However, Kama is also going to have a bunch of skills that favor her. When the battle starts, she's going to decrease the NP gauge of all your allies to 0% every turn for 3 turns. She can also heal herself and her allies by 5000 HP, permanently increase her damage and crit strength, and she can increase her own NP charge as well as inflict charm and NP seal on your allies. 
She can even create clones of herself that will debuff your allies and Noble Phantasm just like her. Most of her skills are pretty much the exact same thing in hard mode as well, but there are some differences. For example, she charges her Noble Phantasm every turn, and your party is only going to remove one debuff every turn instead of three. I won't go into too much detail about how to beat Nightmare Mode, comma, because that's mostly for bragging rights. If all you care about is beating Kama and clearing the event, then I advise making the fight as easy as possible. I also advise to bring your strongest DPS servant and equip them with the Maximate Broken Event Craft Essence to maximize their damage. Keep in mind the event bonus servants like Kama, Okita, Shitonai, and Ryder Kentoki. There are plenty of servants who have a bonus for this event, so make sure you bring one of them if you have them. This battle gives you a lot of benefits, so make sure you take advantage of them. For example, healing every turn whenever you attack, and removing three debuffs every turn, which means that you can focus a lot more on being aggressive. One thing to note is that after four turns, Kama is going to summon a clone of herself who can NP seal you every turn. The clone won't attack you unless they can NP, so try to kill these clones before they fill up their NP gauge, and kill them before Kama starts spamming out more. On the topic of being aggressive, for the first three turns of the battle, Kama is going to drain all of your NP gauges to zero. So you can't rely on craft essences that give you starting NP charge to burst down her HP bar. You have to rely on supports who can give you a lot of NP charge. So servants like Scotty and Waver are going to be fantastic here for that exact reason. They can help burst down Kama's break bars or kill a clone quickly before it can Noble Phantasm. It also helps to have supports who NP drain Kama to prevent her from dealing massive damage to your DPS or charming them. So supports that can drain Noble Phantasm gauge like Tamamo, as well as offensive servants who can drain NP like Kiara and Archer Artoria are going to be great as well. All in all, you should approach this event similarly to how you approach CCC, like a mini story chapter. It's long and it can be very difficult if you try to rush through it. But if you take your time and play it little by little every day, there isn't too much to worry about. If you're struggling with that final boss fight, I heavily advise reducing the difficulty. Since the reward doesn't change, you're still going to get a grail either way. And since this is such a big event, I fully expect a lot of you guys to still have some questions, so let me know your thoughts and questions in the comments down below. And if this video did help you, please do make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if it really helped you. If you haven't already, do follow us on on Twitter, join the party on Twitch, and join the party over on our Discord, all linked in the description down below. And until next time, this is Sobrioni, signing out. Later.